Before you listen to the Tech Talk Daily podcast, I have to ask, are the high levels of uncertainty you're experiencing keeping you from making bold moves? Are you able to clearly see and act on the game-changing opportunities that pandemic has created? I'm Daniel Burris, serial entrepreneur, global technology futurist, and disruptive innovation expert. And right now, you have a choice to make. You can react to problems and disruptions after they happen, or you can learn to accurately anticipate disruptions before they disrupt and identify and pre-solve problems before they happen, giving you the ability to turn disruptive change into your biggest advantage. If you want to take control of your future and make a significant impact now and in the years ahead, join thousands of leaders from around the world by becoming a member of my Anticipatory Leader System, where you'll get the latest insights, processes, tools, and virtual coaching that will give you the certainty and confidence you need to actively shape a better future for you and your organization. Go to techblogwriter.co.uk and click on Daniel Burris. Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, almost every aspect of our lives, business, and indeed world has been going through some form of digital transformation process. And after years of talking about a paperless office, we are nearly there. But what about signing documents? How are regulatory, government and institutional behaviours evolving? And how are they adapting to these changes? And what about security concerns, challenging regulatory environments with more stringent requirements for authentication and compliance, not to mention the growing global e-commerce market, environmental concerns that are fueling that paperless movement too. And COVID has had a profound effect on the nature of work and adoption of technologies, which enable decentralised collaboration, expanding the e-signature and video conferencing marketing too. So today, I've invited Matthew Gibson from a company called Syngraphy to share what trends he's seeing in the market and also legal considerations such as wet ink signatures that are still required in many countries for wills, powers of attorney, contracts, mergers and acquisitions, mortgages, etc. And how is technology tackling that problem? Buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Toronto in Canada so we can speak with Matthew Gibson from Syngraphy. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? I'm Matthew Gibson. I'm the CEO um, and co-founder of a company called Syngraphy Inc., which has gone through a number of um, changes over its years. We were incorporated back in 2003. Uh, with a very different mandate um, than the one we uh, are currently undertaking. Uh, and I'm uh, the oversight and problem solver for the company um, as it relates to services and features um, and certainly intellectual property filing. And I would imagine that your technology is now more important than ever before because Syngraphy actually provides e-signature and video signing, providing that full compliance and in ink and paper signatures, but in a digital form for remote signing, which, like I said, incredibly important right now. But can you, can you set the scene a little and tell me a little bit more about how critical that technology is, especially for businesses in a digital age and paperless office? I think that the the statement paperless office has been a um, a target end state for business um, stemming back really to prior to the E-Sign Act um, and European um, e legislations. Um, we've seen the disadvantages of utilizing paper, but the actual industries are reliant heavily on it from a compliance perspective. I mean, even today with uh, e-signature solutions being offered by hundreds of different companies, and certainly there are you know, a number of industry leaders um, who have done very well in this space, there are still transactions that uh, are required to take place on paper. And certainly the introduction of COVID has thrown that into a bit of a, a, a spin in the sense that regulators are now relaxing those requirements. But Historically, the gold standard of a transaction was an individual wedding signature on a physical piece of paper. 
because identity could be associated to the signature being applied to it. And that, you know, we have hundreds of years of case law that allows a forensic document examiner to look at a signature and signature samples and say, yes, that was indeed Matthew Gibson signing this document, and we can show you why that is indeed the case. So we as a company started in biometrics, actually, uh, but we were tasked with um, one of our co-inventors, Margaret Atwood, wanted to come up with a, um, a solution that would allow publishers to broadcast using what was then quite new video conferencing in the sort of mid 2000s uh, to their readers somewhere else in the world, but provide what every reader wants, which is a signed limited edition of a physical book. And so we were tasked originally not with an e-signature platform, but with a signing platform that would allow the execution of physical pieces of paper with forensically accurate, um, defensible handwriting. And that's really where we started. And like I said, I would imagine there's been a big explosion in this area over the last few months as as people begin to relax their attitudes to this side of things. But I suspect it's been going going on much longer than that. So can you tell me a little bit more about, about the actual growth of the e-signature market? Well, the e-signature market, I mean, with the e-sign act, I mean, uh, came into effect in 2000 in the US. Uh, and Canada has a similar, and as does European um, communities. Um, and really what the acts say is that a, a signature typed or imprinted b- by an individual into an electronic document, as long as all parties agree, uh, will be considered as legally binding as a wedding signature on paper. But early days, really what's happened is, is that the lack of technology in the marketplace, touchscreens, for example, um, capacitive touchscreens. The iPhone was introduced in 2007. So really the, in- the industry has developed solutions of convenience based on typed proxy signatures. And over the years, uh, these pr- proxy signature transactions have been used in very effective ways, but not really at the, the high end of value transactions of title transfer, mortgages, um, wills, estates, etc. And so what we've seen over the years is that e-signatures have picked up uh, a lot of the, the convenience transactions, but have not been able to tap into uh, the high end of the market. I think with COVID, any projections of uh, digital transformation and e-signature use uh, is going to skew quite dramatically any of the projections of market growth in this particular sector. And we'll see that over the course of the next number of years, how businesses originally said, yes, we want to go digital. Uh, We want to go into uh, e-signatures, but there was no pressing need prior to this global pandemic. And certainly in our business, we've seen uh, what used to be 18-month lead times into the consideration of digital transformation are being compressed down into months because they know that they have to come up with ways to service their clients, their business, and business continuity. Um, and certainly e-signatures and, and digital transformation is one of the, the keys to actually pulling that off successfully. And I think consumers, institutions, and governments' behaviours have all shifted, which will obviously have an act on numerous sectors, such as banking. And I, I read recently, I think it was IBM said uh, five or six years ago, that your last experience will automatically become your standard expectation for every future service or interaction with a company. So for those reasons alone, I would imagine post-pandemic, many consumers will expect a greater array of, uh, array of services to, to be offered remotely too. So presu- presumably, more presumably, more and more will be forced to accelerate their internal plans to use technology to acquire and service customers and sell them new products. But what role will you be playing in that future? And and what do you think it is that that makes you different from all those other solutions out there? Interesting um, statement by IBM in the sense that your last experience is your expectation. Uh, And I think that what we're seeing today in the COVID world uh, could be referred to as the 100 mile an hour duct tape solution to what are we what are we going to do for business continuity in order to continue operating given the constraints placed on business work from home protocols and the safety of staff and their and their customers and so what we're seeing is that certainly the regulators are saying uh, almost at the beginning of of the pandemic do what you need to do 
and that could be utilizing three or four different platforms. You could be using a video conferencing. You could be using an e-signature. You could be using you know, various other services that are available out there and blending them together to solve a problem. Um, we've seen lawyers doing wills by having pieces of paper signed across video conferencing and then couriering the papers to the lawyers. But what that does and how we differentiate our services compared to what is being done broadly in the market today is it sets the stage for e-discovery challenges. Where are those pieces of paper? It's all disparate. It's all you know, decentralized. There is no common platform um, in the, the sort of uh, how, how do we solve for this solutions that are being taped together. Whereas Syngraphy has, since its inception, always looked at the strength and power and convenience of video conferencing, combined with, in our video signing room, for example, the presentation, manipulation, discussion of a legally binding document that multiple parties need to execute, all of which is recorded. And we believe that recording of these sessions is an actual critical component for non repudiation strength of contract and indeed i mean the prior gold standard being signing physical pieces of paper in the presence of your lawyer or with your banker sitting beside you um, has been uh, almost made a second level of security compared to what is now happening in our video signing room everything is recorded your ip addresses your signature being sent in from your phone um, the conversation that takes place. And that's really why regulators are so keen on looking at not only the process from an audit perspective, but also consumer protection, which is something that really hasn't been discussed in e-signature platforms historically. It's always been how does the company get what they need to an extent that their internal compliance and legal departments find it acceptable. And so we as a company have unified all of these services into one common platform. And regardless of your compliance needs, we give you the tools to be able to facilitate the execution of documents uh, to varying degrees of compliance, all the way up to ink on paper, which is really where we started. And I have been reading more and more about your video signing room, VSR, it, which I believe is in use in banking, automotive, legal, and so many other sectors. But can you expand on that? Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, the, the video signing room uh, um, came from our original mandate, which was having authors and readers you know, speak to one another. And so we, back in 2004, really started filing intellectual property. And the, the unification of uh, technologies that became ubiquitous over time in a, a system and a method has allowed very high value transactions where there's a great deal of risk associated to or a, or a financial risk associated to being completed in the digital channel, the question always comes down to who is at the other end of this transaction. And current e-signature solutions rely very heavily on what we refer to as proxy signatures. It's a representation of your signature. But from a biometric perspective, your signature is a unique biometric in indicator of intent. Your signature um, is yours uniquely, and every time you apply it, it is uniquely different. And therefore, we as a company can track that uniquely different version of your unique signature to any agreement, any page, um, in any transaction. And as a result, proxy signatures, while we provide those for lower value transactions, um, have allowed companies like leasing, finance, mortgage, title transfer, all of the, you know, the will uh, execution in a recorded session in our VSR is more secure because you can play the entire transaction back. And in regulated industries, which you've just referenced in banking and finance, and we are, are very uh, heavily involved um, insolvency. Um, those are all high consumer risk areas and risks for the organizations having the transactions completed. And we uh, have really built uh, a platform that can handle those high value transactions with a, uh, the highest degree of certainty. 
And I'm curious, are you seeing regulatory and government and institutional behaviour evolving over the last few months and adapting to the, to the changes? Or, or have you seen that before everything uh, kicked off this year? Um, I think that what we, we've been seeing over the years, um, as have consumers, as have companies, that um, regulators uh, have wanted to find more cost-effective, more environmentally friendly, more efficient ways to tap into the strength, power, um, ease, and convenience of technological advancements in the marketplace. I mean, smartphones are ubiquitous. Um, so there was a move towards it. But there was no burning need to make that um, a priority until recently. And as a result, some people have been caught flat-footed in the sense of, well, we haven't really implemented this. We've shown interest in it. Uh, what do we do now? And as a result, it, it, they almost opened the floodgates of do whatever you need to do within reason to complete these transactions so that your business can continue operating. And, and that brings with it um, a great deal of risk, especially in regulated industries. It brings with it the risk of fraud. Um, uh, certainly, regulated industry representatives uh, taking advantage of some of the, the weaknesses in what is being used and utilized right now. But I honestly do believe COVID has been the catalyst for a fundamental shift to digital transactions. Um, in a way that I don't think that they can close that door again. And so while it needs to find, yeah. um, it's here to stay. And as someone working right in the heart of this industry, are you? Are there any other trends that you're seeing right now, especially as we're looking towards entering 2021, where things are, are probably continue to, to evolve at a rapid space? But is, is there any other trends that you're noticing? I think the, the, accept, the expectation more so of um, consumers, clients, uh, to have the services that they are reliant upon, whether that be government sourced or whether that be industry sourced, uh, be made far more conveniently available in a way that is highly secure um, and that doesn't require them to go out of their way to complete business with the companies that they are engaged with. And so I think that the, the global community is saying we've been forced into doing the 100 mile an hour duct tape version of this given COVID, and we really like it. So why isn't this made available to be across a broad range of services? And as a result, it really has been, and certainly my view, um, opening Pandora's box to efficiency and, and ease of use. And for anybody listening that have been following this very closely and, and know that they need to adapt and embrace this technology and want to do something different and evolve and adapt with it, with the current landscape, is there any advice that you would offer to them? Think long term. Yeah. There are, there are short term solutions that are available today and you can bolt things together to meet your particular needs today. But we as a company, for example, don't pretend to understand any of our clients' compliance needs. The eSign Act says that a fax, if both parties agree, is a legally binding document. But I can tell you that the reason that e-signatures have not been broadly adopted in a more accelerated fashion across a broad range of market verticals and industries is because of the internal compliance and legal departments that say, I don't care if a fax is considered legally binding, we're not doing that. There's too great a risk. And so when you're looking at what are we going to do to react to what has become, in many respects, the new world, the new economy, uh, where work from home, where services from home um, are the expectation, what do we put in place that will grow with us that anticipates all of our possible needs and in our case it's certainly everything from click to sign type to sign to wedding signatures uh, original signatures in a digital document or signing physical pieces of papers remotely um, whatever your signing needs are we do and so just think through carefully where you might be two five ten years from now and what about yourselves at Sigma Free? Is that uh, what's next for you? Is, it, is there anything else you can share with us about the road ahead for you guys? 
Oh, well, I think, you know, we've, we've built a, a very flexible, easy to use, um, friendly, um, across all platform solution. And really now it comes down to features and what do our clients want to see? And we're a very agile company in the sense that we take feedback from our clients saying it would be really nice if we do this. Our, our development roadmap, um, is certainly extensive, much to the horror of our CTO. Uh, but there, there is a, a future as new technologies, new services come online. For example, KYC modules where you can tap into external databases to assure identity, you know, which would only augment the strength associated to an original forensic biometrically accurate signature. We'll continue to build the platform out to make it more and more secure. And uh, we strive to be the most compliant, secure platform moving forward. Well, I've loved chatting with you today. And for anyone listening that would like to dive into this topic a little bit deeper, what's the best way of finding you guys online and equally contacting your team if they are left with any questions after listening to our conversation today? Well, cer- certainly our website, uh, www.singraphy, spelt S-Y-N as in Nancy, G-R-A-F-I-I.com. All of our senior executives are available on LinkedIn, um, and we look forward to having anyone get in touch with us who might want to learn more about why uh, compliance, non-repudiation, and ease of use might be of interest over the long term. Well, it has been an incredibly turbulent year, and it's a big year of changes, and I think it began pre-COVID with environmental concerns fueling this paperless movement, and then obviously COVID's profound effect on the nature of work and adoption of technologies which enable decentralized collaboration, expanding that e-signature market and the video conferencing market. So much to talk about here, and I'd love to get you on next year and continue this journey and where it's heading, but more than anything, just thanks for sharing everything with me today. I appreciate it. I'd be absolutely delighted to join you again. Wow, so many insights there for Matthew. I mean, regulatory, government and institutional behaviours have changed. And we also believe that the direction of COVID interim regulatory exemptions for remote oaths, contracts, contracts, etc. will include recording, which is why Signify's video signing room, VSR, is incredibly intriguing to me and how it's being used in banking, automotive, legal and other sectors in an area where each signature is unique to the document, not a proxy. So when banks require it, the long pen or robotic pen can be deployed to augment what is already a legally binding video signing room signature. But I'm conscious you may know a lot more about this world than myself. So please, I invite you to share your experiences, questions, concerns, whatever it may be, by emailing me, techblogwriter at outlook.com. My website is techblogwriter.co.uk. Let's keep this conversation going. But I am a few days into lockdown here in the UK. So just to avoid cabin fever, I'm going to put on my running shoes and hit the uh, canal path now. (laughs) Wish me luck and I'll join you all again tomorrow. So thanks for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.